another video on um, butter enriched sourdough. So I had a go last time I made some bread. Uh, I took uh, 600 grams worth of my sourdough uh, mixture and I um, need I made it, fermented it, knocked it back, let it ferment in the fridge um, for ooh, probably 12 hours. Um, I can't actually quite remember, but it was fermented in the fridge um, slowly, and then I kneaded in uh, 600, uh, took 600 grams worth of my dough, I make a lot more than that, I make um, about three loads, so it's about a third of the, the amount, so it's 600 grams, and I kneaded in um, 50 grams worth of butter to that, as a way of uh, incorporating butter into the sourdough, uh, it was nice, it tasted nice, but the outcome wasn't particularly very well, uh, there was lots of big air pockets in it, which I wasn't happy about, so I thought, um, what I'd do is the next time I, uh, uh, I have a, uh, I make some bread, I've made bread today, I've made bread today, um, next time I do it I would have another go and I would put it in a loaf tin, uh, I've just put some butter in that loaf tin rather than olive oil because it's butter in here so it's, it's, it's uh, butter in there just around the outside so it from, from uh, sticking, although it might caramelise on the outside, but I'm not bothered about that. I'm going to have a go at making a loaf. So I rewatched the video um, on me making um, loaves, sandwich loaves. Uh, obviously, that's a loaf, but I'm talking like sandwich loaf is in like uh, the type of bread that you'd use to make a sandwich. You don't use that bread to make a sandwich. You'll see when I finished. But anyway, so uh, and what I want to do this time is I want to properly let it rise. Um, so with sourdough, what a lot, uh, uh, quite a lot of the rise comes in. The when you cook it in the oven, and that's where you get the big air pockets. And um, because of the hydration of the uh, sourdough, it holds together um, the uh, pockets a lot more uniform. Uh, but because there wasn't as much gluten in this dough, because of the extra quantity of butter, it, it caused some bigger holes, which is not what I wanted. So I'm going to I'm going to rise it again. Um, I'm going to form it. I'm going to rise it in the tin and then we're going to bake it in the tin and kind of see what happens. So uh, we'll do it more like a standard um, bread loaf where you probably rise it and then you bake it, whereas a, a sourdough you don't necessarily have to do that as much. So, god that was long winded wasn't it? So much short videos. So it's a bit sticky, it's a bit sticky, so we're going to have to use some flour. Uh, I don't normally use flour when I'm kneading, uh, when I'm uh, shaping my sourdough, um, but we'll probably need a little bit of flour to this and we're going to use the scraper just to get it off the board and get it in some kind of see it's just it's all right once you get it going but it just wants to stick to everything so we just need a bit of well don't look too much flour on the board and then what do I want to do so I want to stretch it out and it wants to be in like a, a bit of a triangle shape Right, how I did it? Did I roll it out? Can't remember. Can't remember. Um, um, a triangle or an oblong? We'll see how we go. I've forgotten. I've watched the video today and I've forgotten it already. But uh, it's all about creating tension in dough, so you get that nice split. So you get that nice split because you create tension in the dough, and it's the same when you create a sandwich loaf. So, what do we do, right? So we need to cause tension. So we need to take this dough on the top here and we need to roll it in, and roll it in, roll it in like that. And it causes, creates tension in the dough like, like that. And then what do you do? Oh, right. And then you do, you took those in and roll it a bit. And then we should have caught some tension now the splits there so I didn't do that particularly very well I'm not gonna roll it out again and then that in there so we've created some tension those are just lumps out there not butter I hope that's not butter no fine so we'll leave it in there and we'll put a cover we'll put a shower cap over it so um I don't like plastic waste um but so we can buy some shower caps and we can use them over and over and over and over again and then when they're finally completely useless, uh, then we can throw them away. We'll just put a bit of flour on top. 
you just put a bit of flour on top and then if it rises too much because I've got the oven on if it rises too much then uh, it won't stick to the shower cap so we'll leave that to approve for two three hours I'm not doing anything else this afternoon so it can just sit on to one side I'll keep an eye on it and then once it's not double in size but say like two thirds grown in size um, then we'll what we call it then we'll then we'll put it in the oven and we'll bake it and I won't do it on the really hot temperature which I normally do I think I'll do it in about 220 something like that um, because obviously it's got butter in it and I don't want to, it to burn and it's got butter in the pan as well so I don't want that to burn either but anyway so we'll see how it turns out right I don't think that's going to rise any more than that and if it does I think it, there's always the risk that it's going to collapse and we haven't got any bubbles coming through um, either which is not what I kind of want I don't want it to start fermenting again I just want it to rise so the oven's on I can't put it in straight away uh, it's just going to give it um, 10 minutes to heat up and then we'll put it in the oven pull it out and we'll see how it turns out um, although it's getting kind of late we might have to see we might have to cut into it in the morning uh, depending depending on what time it comes out but it's not going to take I don't know half an hour in the oven something like that not very long it's not that big uh, I was thinking I was remembering the video and the I put 800 grams worth of dough in these before um, and they puffed up quite a substantial bit so that's, that's not it might come to the top of the of the tin I don't think it'll rise any more than that but we'll see what it's like uh, when it goes in the oven just not yet so I don't know why I'm not why I'm I don't know why I just didn't do the video when I put it in the oven but anyway here we go let's have a look oh that's really isn't it Actually, right, oven off. And let's see if we can get it out of there straight away. Should do. Ah, oh, there we go. Out of there straight away. So, that should be alright, should that? That should be alright. Uh, it's not exploded into life like I would have liked it to. We'll just put it on there so, so it it, um, it airs all the way around. It hasn't split open like I just liked. I did put some score marks on the top. But it's certainly double the size, maybe even three times the size it originally was. Um, yeah, maybe not creating tension in the dough worked. Maybe if we put less water in the dough to kind of compensate for the for the for the butter, maybe. But anyway, it smells really good. It smells really buttery. Yeah, so. We'll let it cool and then we'll see uh, what it's like once we cut, cut into it. I don't think it'll be tonight. Um, I think it'll probably be tomorrow when I cut into it. But that's fine. It's not that light. But it's got that butter in it, hasn't it? So we'll see what it's like. It'll be fine. Right, let's cut into this bread. Uh, it's actually like 24 hours, almost 24 hours later. Um, so it's gone a little bit dry, but I'm not bothered about it drying out. I just want to see what it looks like on the inside. I could have lied there, couldn't I? Uh, I told you, I uh, didn't have to admit that, but that's not me at all. So, oh, that's okay, isn't it? That's okay. So last time we had the big, the big holes, like there. Um, but certainly cooking it in a um, bread tin certainly works. It was delicious last time. It was lovely and buttery. That's all right. So you can kind of see like circles where it's been rolled. I can I can kind of see where it's got circles. Right, what's it taste like? Delicious. That's really nice. It's got the taste of, not the taste of sourdough. So sourdough has got a, like an improved kind of flavour, but it's got that butteriness to it. So, and it certainly hasn't. It's away from sourdough. So that's the end of my sourdough. Cut into that. Uh, baked those yesterday. Um, so that's how the sourdough looks, and that's how the adding the butter changes it. So, how yeah, about? Let's get the other one. I mean, it'd be about 
the same amount of dough in each, but we've lost we've lost volume because of obviously that's got bigger air pockets in it, does it feel? Yeah, it feels about the same way. Uh, I thought it should weigh it, shouldn't it? No, it's not going to make a difference because of the uh, because of the butter we put in it. But what was that loaf weigh? Six hundred and forty-three grams. We've had a bit out of that. So five hundred and seventy grams. So there's probably more dough in that, but we've lost we've lost some of the weight of the dough through through moisture and evaporating. But there we go. That works, doesn't it? We just have to cook it in a loaf tin rather than um, cook it in, in, a, in a what we call it, in a traditional uh, style like that where we shape the bread and use a, um, a, a proven basket. Uh, I would say uh, the last time I baked bread in the um, that uh, it was like 800 grams worth of dough so I think there needs to be more uh, bread in it if you want to so I'd do 800 grams worth of dough and I'd use 75 grams worth of butter, I think. Uh, I'd probably make it a little bit wetter. Uh, but something like, uh, maybe 70 grams. Maybe 70 grams of butter for uh, for 800 grams worth of, of dough, and then you get a lovely bread, and that'd be taller and more like a sandwich loaf. But there we go. Uh, so that works. So, second try. Not bad. You just need to prove it. Oh, yeah. So, you see, I've taken a bite of something and I've started carrying on talking. I'm not going to spit it out. So, it did take a while to prove. So, it was probably proving for about six, six, maybe seven hours it was proving. Whereas you normally get with a fast acting yeast, you'd, you'd have it proved in an hour. It took about six or seven because it's sourdough and it takes longer. But I'm assuming. You could just make a normal bread and put in in butter with some extra butter in it, you know. Um, which you don't normally. We used to do at college. We used to do at college. We used to put a little bit of of, of lard in with the butter, uh, in with the um, in with the bread, and the my college lecturer said it improved the keeping quality of the bread and made it a little bit softer. But anyway, there we go. We can put butter in a sourdough and make it turns it into like a like a proper, not a proper bread, but a, a a bread like that, which is very nice. Be nice if it was fresh, fresh, but all the same, it works. Success. Uh, if I think there's anything else we need to do with that, um, we'll have another go at some point. Uh, but I think that's pretty it. I think I've answered my question. I don't think we'll be able to get any more butter in the dough than that because it's kind of quite a soft dough. But there we go. Success.